You have to have a standard with which you operate. Like you said, doctor's recommendations. What is that? That's a standard. Standard of what? Standard of care. We're not telling you what it should be. We're saying you need to have one. And why? It's right for the patient. It's also right for you. Guess who else it's right for? And I think a lot about these people, your CAs. It's right for your team. Hello and welcome to the Remarkable CEO Podcast, a show dedicated to chiropractors who want to transform their job into a business so that they can have a remarkable practice as part of a remarkable life, not instead of one. With your hosts, Dr. Pete Camiolo and Dr. Stephen Franzen. Welcome back to another episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. I'm Dr. Pete Camiolo. And I'm Dr. Stephen Franzen. And we are in a series which we are thoroughly enjoying because we're calling it the part of our resurgence plan of 2021 Q2. We're calling this the Renaissance Quarter And it's all about the roaring 2020s. Guys, what a start we had to this this decade. Unbelievable. We will never forget it. I mean, we'll never forget it. I don't think anytime soon anybody will. But I'll tell you right now, what we have seen is that very clearly here in 2021, Q1, now into Q2, is now is the time. Now is the time. It's happening. It's time to be mobilizing. If you remember the Phoenix plan we released in 2020, in April, guys, April 2020, we talked about the three tiers. We're going to start stage one was stabilization, then reactivation, then mobilization. Well, guess what? Mobilization phase is now. Now is the time. And we talked about in in the, the journey that we're all on of this growth, that there are gaps in the journey. Dr. Steven is going to talk about that. But now is the time my friends. And if you missed the previous episode, I want you to go back and listen to it because it's actually a the episode that leads into today's episode. We're talking about these gaps in your businesses on their trajectory of growth. And many times gaps, also known as blind spots. And what we're doing is we're speaking into those today um, in, in, this, in this podcast today, focusing specifically on the second gap. But I want you to understand this. We talked about this on the last one. That And I love this, how Dr. Steven, you break this down into fuel, air, and spark. We talked about it that your, your new patients coming in is the fuel. The marketing is the spark and the money is the air. And we talked about that. We talked about if you want to get your business going and growing, you've got to get out there, but you got to understand there's the three elements. You've got to have the fuel, you've got to have the air and the spark, and that's how you ignite the fire. That's how you create of fire is you got to have all three elements. And so this is in, in, in a theme now of saying, okay, if you get the fire going, that's the first step, right? You got to have the fuel, the air and the spark to get it going and you got to keep it going. But there are elements to running a business successfully long-term that, that, that early energy, getting it going and getting people coming in is just the beginning. And we're going to get into that today, Dr. Steve. I'm really excited about today's episode. Yeah, it's huge. So Pete, I just wanted to put an exclamation point on what you just said around now is the time, right? So I just want everybody to recognize that uh, if you've been waiting, if you've been waiting for permission to start really jumping on the accelerator pedal to right to ramp up your marketing, you consider this your invitation, right? Consider this your your this this is your call to action. You have got to do it right now, right? Because this is all happening. We're seeing this. We have hundreds of coaching clients that we get to see exactly what's happening around the world, and now is the time they're experiencing best weeks ever. Best, best months ever, best quarters ever, right now, right? So we wanted you to, we're going to encourage you to jump on the gas. And that was really the theme of our last episode when we talked about this trajectory of growth. And we all want to see this awesome trajectory for you. We're expectant that this is going to be the biggest season of growth in chiropractic's history over the next 12 to 18 months. And we don't want you to miss it, right? So we keep saying that to you because listen, it's already happening. The party is going on, get on the dance floor, right? So it was about pushing your chips in, and making sure that you are leaning in on your marketing, right? So you're getting your marketing machine going because everybody's dumping into the marketplace. We want to make sure that they're dumping into your place, right? Because that's where they belong. That's where they're going to find a better way to better health, right? So the last time we were together, we talked about these gaps in that trajectory. And it's not uncommon that practices um, experience these sticking points, right? So as they look at this trajectory, everybody wants to do this nice linear, you know, growth all the way through the year. But the reality is, is you'll hit these spots 
uh, or what we call gaps where it's like, man, I just got stuck here. And you know, whether they like the money gap very often happens somewhere between zero and 15,000 a month, trying to get to 15 to 30,000 a month. There's the money gap. I got no money. So I do no marketing. So I have no new patients. So I have no new money, right? It's this vicious cycle, right? And we talked about how to catapult yourself over that first gap, right? And then the second gap, we see this, there's a gap that happens typically somewhere between the 30 and 45,000, trying to go from 45 to 60,000. Somewhere in there, there's a gap. And what ends up happening is there's a gap where you do have new patients coming in, but there's a weak start or conversion process that happens. And therefore you have this weak commitment, which leads to a weak compliance or poor compliance, which leads to patient dropout. And now you need to replace those patients with more new patients to convert. And now, now we have this, what we call the replacement gap, right? So there's a revolving door in your practice, right? So you, you're, you're bringing new patients in, but let's face it, it's a bit of, it's been a little wonky this past year, right? So you might, maybe you're off your game on your conversion process, or maybe you've diluted down your conversion process, right? And, you know, let's, let's just face it. There's some levels of desperation in our industry right now, where they just, uh, they want to convert everybody that comes in the door, right? So where, wherever you find yourself, you know, you just know that we're speaking to you compassionately right now. We're just recognizing that might be your reality. It's time to pick your head up and recognize that that weak start leads to poor compliance, poor compliance leads to patient dropout. And now you have to get more new patients and those are replacements to replace the people that are dropping out of your practice. Yeah, Dr. Steven, this is, this is really powerful. There's a couple of things. Number one is um, you have to be tracking this stuff. You have to track your, your stats. You, we got we to gotta be able to know like what is, what is going on. Because what you're actually talking about, Dr. Steven, is the only reason why we have understanding of this is because we can measure it. Um, we can track it. And so we're talking to CEOs. This is the CEO podcast. This is what we're talking about. And one of the things is you have to have metrics. You have to measure the, the if you want to see your business grow, then you have to know your business. And if you're going to know your business, you got to know your numbers, you got to know your metrics. And we want to manage by the metrics. We can make database decisions, data-driven decisions. And every, everything that Dr. Steven just said actually comes from data, data that we have visibility into We've had visibility to, we have visibility to in our own practices and so many other practices. So I just want you to understand that. So number one is if you're not doing a good job tracking your numbers and your stats, I'm going to encourage you to do that. And if you know you're doing it, but you could do a better job, I'm going to encourage you to do that as well, because we got to be able to look at the data and say, okay, where are these people going? Because I'll talk to a lot of people, uh, doctors, chiropractors who say my conversion is great. Um, but, but we're not growing. So we have a retention problem, right? Dr. Franson. Um, but my, but my, 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 but my conversion is great. I convert like 90%, um, or more, you know, and I'm like, okay. So the, the, here's, here's the thing. Um, the 30 to 40, that, that gap, like you talked about, like that 30 to 40, that 40 to 60, that gap, I'd, I'd like, cause I know some of you might say, oh, we've had, that's kind of what we had. Like we've had months like that, but sometimes we're lower. Sometimes we're higher. If I looked over the last two years though, what are we looking at revenue wise? If you're hovering in that 30 to 35 range and you're just kind of like, yeah, we're kind of hovering right in here. What Dr. Steven, you just said, this is exactly what's going on because you're getting new patients. They're coming in, they're coming in. You're getting new. I, I think they are. I, I don't, again, I can't, but if let's say you've got new patients coming in, What's happening is the revolving door. And Dr. Steven, you said this. And again, it's, it's a sobering moment. We're sensitive to this. So we're, we're coming at this with a ton of hopefully um, kindness uh, and, and grace and sensitivity, but also solutions. And this is exactly why we have the vault. And we're going to talk about that again. We, we mentioned that just at the little bit at the, at the end of the last episode. But I want to talk about the vault today a little bit, Dr. Franson, because it's such a powerful resource that it's totally being underutilized. Uh, in our profession today. And it's a, it's a ma massive opportunity for so many. Yeah. yeah. Here's a few words from our newest podcast sponsors. We're grateful for their support of the show. Hey doc, would you like to rest easier knowing that another set of well-trained eyes were reviewing all of your x-rays for pathology? How nice would it be to know that you have a team of expert radiologists checking your films preparing reports and assisting in patient management and diagnosis. Would you like to be accredited with Medicare 
and have all of the IT infrastructure to make the entire operation work without having to invest hundreds of thousands of dollars? Would you like to reduce costs to patients by providing a radiology service paid for via Medicare? Innate Radiology can help. Innate Radiology provides teleradiology reporting services for Australian chiropractors under Medicare. They help with the setup and management of radiology practices inside chiropractic clinics all around Australia. They coordinate the entire radiology setup and management for chiropractors, making the process easy, efficient, cost effective, and profitable. Innate Radiology subleases the chiropractic clinic premises to operate a radiology centre within the chiropractor's office. This provides a great service, peace of mind, and a revenue stream to the chiropractic business bottom line, whilst providing a government-funded health service to the chiropractor's referred patients, reducing their out-of-pocket expense, which would otherwise incur costs. The founders of Innate Radiology are a chiropractic team who know what chiropractors want from a radiology service. They make the investment into a radiology setup positive cash flow from day one, which adds dollars to the business bottom line. To learn more, go to www.innateradiology.com.au. That's www.innateradiology.com.au. We should all agree that right now, more than ever, online presence, brand positioning, and reputation are the most influential factors for driving new patients into our practices. That's why we are proud to partner with Perfect Patients, who have since 2005 been a leader in our chiropractic industry, serving thousands of chiropractors worldwide. With a team of more than 70 marketing professionals, anything that can be done online to grow your practice is included with their digital marketing plans. Perfect Patients uses their proven five factors of digital marketing success model, and their service includes design and development of high converting websites, SEO, PPC, reputation management, review generation, email marketing, and social media management. To learn more, go to perfectpatients.com. That's perfectpatients.com. Patient flow and automation of patient data is one of the keys to growing a remarkable practice that's both scalable and durable. And that's exactly why we are happy to partner with Atlas Chiropractic Software. Atlas Chiropractic Software can run your entire office. It's easy to learn and the most customizable chiropractic software available on the market. They help streamline your office with kiosk sign-in, call to table automation, customizable digital paperwork, 10 second soap note, patient education modules, safety net retention, and more. To learn more, go to atlaschirosys.com. That's A-T-L-A-S-C-H-I-R-O-S-Y-S.com. And now let's jump right back into our conversation. Dr. B, this, these two episodes are really about just turning the lights on at the dance, right? Let's just turn the lights on, everybody. Turn the lights on, <laughs> right? So that's really, you know, when you start talking about metrics, right? So you're starting about your stats, guys, or your, or your, the measurements, you can't master what you don't measure, right? So if you don't even have an awareness, like when, you, when we talk to CEOs and the owners of businesses, owners of, we're talking to you guys, we're talking to practitioners right now, right? So if you own the business, you, you can't master what you don't measure. Right. So to grow your business, you got to know your business, which means you need to know your numbers. We have to be able to talk to you and say, okay, so we, we look at that cycle I just talked about. We have new patients coming in. They do convert, but it's a weak conversion. So there's poor compliance and the compliance leads to dropout. Poor compliance leads to patient dropout. Right. And now you need new, just, just in that loop right there, we've got number of new patient leads. We've got conversion percentage, right? So we've got, we've got total numbers of converted new patients, right? So then we've got percentage of patients mapped out, percentage of people that are on a care plan, percentage of people that are, are uh, on a payment plan and a payment agreement. Then we've got compliance percentage. And then we've got R4 stick rate. We've got R4 reconversion rate. Like you do you hear what I just did there? It's like, I just went right around the loop. Okay. Of, and those are just the metrics for the high level metrics of this, of all of the stopping points on that circle in that cycle. And if we were to be able to look at your metrics to tell you exactly where that thing's fallen down. And I hope what you teased out of there was, man, there were some metrics there that we just don't track. Like, what did you say about like, 
compliance percentage and R4 stick rate. And what, what, what was that? Like, it's the essence of what we're talking about right now. Okay. So here's the truth, guys. When you have a weak start and the start has a set of expectations and agreements that you make around a conversion process. And those expectations and agreements are to set the patient up for success. Like if you're converting a person so that you can help them get better health outcomes and achieve their immediate short-term and long-term goals, which I think we're in the business of, right? So we say we're in the business of saving lives. Do you act like it? Okay, would we, would we see that in your conversion process, right? So we're setting people up for success. Like this is not just a good idea. This is a law of the jungle. We know what it takes for a person to actually get better health outcomes, right? So they've got to follow your recommendations for care, period, hard stop. All right. So doc, I'm going to tell you something right now. And if you're a note taker, you should write this down and underline it. You're in the compliance business. Okay. As soon as you recognize that compliance leads to everything you want, trust me. Okay. So compliance means following the doctor's recommendations for care. I'm not telling you what kind of recommendations to give. So please stop that limiting belief. Whatever your recommendations are for care as their doctor, as the expert that they're hiring right now to help them get better health outcomes, those are your recommendations for care, okay? So compliance to the doctor's recommendations for care leads to better health outcomes for your patients. It leads to a happier patient, so they refer more patients. It leads to better retention and drives revenue. So retention if you think about this, when, you say, when I say you're in the compliance business, compliance leads to better health outcomes or results, that's the first R. Happier patients refer more patients, so referrals. It leads to greater retention, the third R, and all of that drives revenue, the fourth R. All of our favorite R's come from compliance. Dr. Pete, we're in the compliance business. Yeah, we are. And, and compliance starts early on in the journey. One of my favorite days of all the days is day zero. And Dr. Steven, I don't know if you even knew I'm going to talk about this, but EO, uh, because you, know, you wonder where, where does the ball get dropped? And I always say right at the beginning, it, it, you know, as, as close to the beginning as possible is typically where we, we drop it. And I think a lot of this comes back to um, you know, when we're booking in appointments, I'm already testing compliance. I'm, 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 I'm sensing who this person is right away. And I've trained myself and my team to, to, to start analyzing the relationship before the relationship even begins. Guys, there's such a sensitivity to this game. I don't care whether you're getting Facebook leads spinal screening leads, radio leads, referrals, whatever the thing, man, we're testing compliance at day zero. It begins at day zero. Like the sensitivity, my sensitivity in my business started before a person even stepped their foot in my door, man. I knew about that person because we had very specific ways. We communicated with them questions. We asked them things we asked them to do. And all of that led to me knowing, okay, who am I working with here? Or who are we potentially going to accept here? Uh, are we willing to take you on, so to speak, here? So compliance begins by number one, Dr. Steven, you have to have a standard. You have to have a standard with which you operate. Like you said, doctor's recommendations. What is that? That's a standard. Standard of what? Standard of care. We're not telling you what it should be. We're saying you need to have one. And why? It's right for the patient. It's also right for you. Guess who else it's right for? And I think a lot about these people, your CAs. It's right for your team. I, I think a lot about my CAs because I said, you know what? My job, I, I'm here to serve you, right? I'm here to serve you, my team, because I know without my team being able to do your job, there's no shot that we're going to be able to do our job and I'm not going to be able to do my job. So the first thing that compliance does is it honors your team because your team needs to be able to anchor. They need to be able to anchor to the standard, and they need to be able to know what is it that's expected of me and what is it that that is success for me and for this business. So we're setting the standard by compliance, by having being a compliance-based business, compliance beginning at day zero, which means I have a standard for which we operate and we have an expectation and agreement that's being set pre even showing up. And my team knows what that is and they're trained up on that and we focus on that. I'll tell you what, that changes the way that the relationships go in, in, in it with any person that can, is going to cross the threshold of my, of my door. 
any person that's going to be coming in. And so I want you to be thinking about your day zeros right now. Because again, this is this is coming on the heels of what we just covered in, in, a, in the previous episode. If you haven't watched or listened, go back and please do that. So if you're adding the, if you got the fuel, air and spark, and you've got things going, and you've got people coming in, slow down and build the compliance right at the beginning. Don't miss it. Don't miss day zero. Day zero, a lot of times we see it as like, oh, day zero. All right, day one. Yeah, it's all about day one. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Blind spot, day zero. We, we can do so much better, friends. We, we can help so many more people and our teams can be so much more empowered in this process. We're talking about the replacements gap, Dr. Steven, right? We're talking about this, this replacements gap. Like, where's the pain point? Where are we missing the mark? I'm going to tell you right now, some of you CEOs, I know you wrote that down because I know, I know some of you, I know how you are. You're like, oh, wow, day zero. We, we probably haven't paid enough attention yeah. now. Have you been spying on my team? <laughs> You're right. We haven't done that in a while. I just, we just, we're, we're just, because I know, Dr. Steven, there are many of you listening to this are big, big, big successes. You are. And you know what? I congratulate you. Thank you for all the hard work and continue to do. There's more. There's more for you. There's more work. There's more lives to be saved. We got to do a better job. Some of you are like, man, I haven't just hit it yet. I'm still trying to get out of the, I'm spinning my wheels. I'm in this gap. I mean, I'm in one of these gaps you've been discussing these last couple of weeks. Okay. We're here. We're here for you. It's, it's amazing, Dr. B. There's this conversation, you know, when you, if you, if you stopped listening two minutes or three minutes or four minutes into this podcast, you'd be like, oh, they're talking about retention today. It's like, um, yep, that's how most people see it because it manifests as poor retention. But real, the reality of this is it's a conversion problem, right? So this particular gap, right? So when you have the revolving door and you have the re replace, there is a retention skill set component to this for sure. And we are coming back to that one, right? Because there's, a, there's a, a whole series we have in line for you here around exactly what does this look like? But right now, Let's just slow down to speed up. What do you say, right? This is the hard, easy conversation. It's like front end investment is what this is right now. This is making sure that day zero, day one, day two, day three, day four, this process is airtight. This is what we call our true conversion process, right? So day zero, before they even come into the office, like how, what's that first interaction like? Day one, what is that day one process like? Your conversion process, day one is about what? Connection and discovery, right? So that day one process that starts that empathetic connection and creating curiosity and give them context for what we do and do something different in our office. Day two, day two is about ownership, them taking ownership of their problem, their goals, their path and their plan, right? Right? Day, day three, day three is about expectations and agreements and just shaping and setting expectations for a long-term successful and productive relationship. And then day four is your wellness workshop, right? So they're committing on day two they are converting on day four. And there's a difference between those two things. Dr. Pete, you and I both, we've embraced the truth that it's not just about converting people, okay? It's not just about getting people started. It's definitely not just about closing people, right? So we're not here to close people, right? What we're here is to create true conversion. And true conversion is when a person goes from a seeker to a believer and from a believer to an understander, right? And that is our entire design so that people, they elevate their expectations of their health. They elevate their hope around what's possible for them and their family. They shape and change their belief system. So we change the trajectory of the health for the entire family for a lifetime. When they recognize that chiropractic is not limited to this short-term treatment modality for people in crisis, man, we love to help those people, but they have to recognize what's available to them on the other side of that. And that is chiropractic as a lifestyle success strategy for healthy human beings. Well, all of that starts right here in the beginning. When we talk about this replacements gap, when you have new patients that are coming in and they convert, but it's a weak conversion for whatever reason, your conversion process is off what I just described, which leads to poor compliance. And we're in the compliance business, which leads to patient dropout. Right. And now we're having that revolving door where our practice isn't growing. We get stuck because we have people falling out of the side door as fast as they're coming in the front door. Dr. Pete, this is the gap we overcome with our remarkable conversion process. It, it is. And there are very specific things that we do. And as I've walked through this with how many immersions we've done on, you know, conversion immersions and how we've dug deep. By the way, if, if you're looking to get immersed in something and you want an accelerated 
environment and learning environment, you actually have an opportunity, depending on when you listen to this episode, whether you're in the North America or you're in Australia, we actually have our conversion immersion uh, coming up, depending on when you hear this, we're going back live and we'd love to train with you. But I'll tell you what, we, we go layers deep at our immersions. It is immersive, right? So we, we go deep and we accelerate your learning and we go layers and layers deep and we accomplish a lot in a very short period of time. Um, but again, the vault, the vault 100% covers this. But Dr. Steven, I want to speak to an energy that I say I sense a lot amongst chiropractors. And we, you and I had talked about this a couple, maybe a week or two ago, uh, which in, in relationship to this, which is the, the desperation gap or the desperation cycle, that energy, that when you're in a desperation energy, it's actually hard for you to be kind. It's very hard to be loving. It's hard to be generous. It's when, when you're, when you're in a desperation cycle, what ends up happening is you're in, it's a vicious cycle, vicious going down, virtuous going up. So you're in a, you're in a cycle of desperation, that revolving door and that we, you have to break free of that. You, you do, you have to get out of that. And that's where I feel very, very confidently that, you know, you're talking about the vault and the resources that we have and specifically targeting what what's missing on your day zero on your day one on your day two on your day three on your day four as you just said and you talked about what's the goal of each one of those specifically in taking a person through the journey of seeker through becoming an understander is there are specific things that you'll 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 identify now doc steven you and i we could literally have a conversation right now and pick our top three things right we could do that and it would speak to a certain audience. Then we can say, all right, let's pick three more things. It would speak to a different audience. The, the reality is that we all have this at, at any given time in our, in our journey. We're like, you know, we could be doing a better job at that. Actually, we used to do that really well, but we stopped. I don't know what's going on, right? So this happens in our conversion process. We just take our eye off the ball a little bit, you know, and, um, and, and we just start missing things. And or, hey, we, we, we are now getting new patients from, let's call it, digital marketing where we never had that before we used right. to always get them from this path and now i don't have to do that so again we could cover this in yeah. such depth things start getting dropped and we start drifting from our yeah. process and our system falls apart and it's death by a thousand cuts right and yeah. kairos when they listen to us talk they could be overwhelmed by that and feel like oh my gosh it's like do i have to do every single step perfectly and i always say no you just have to stop sucking <laughs> like you just, you don't have to be perfect. <laughs> you just have to suck less. <laughs> That's the key to it. And I find that really <laughs> encouraging, right? So it's just suck yeah. less. Let us help yeah. you suck less, right? Like literally every single step of the process, you're either moving a person towards conversion and deeper into the practice and then moving their way out of the practice. Let us help you with each of those steps of the process, all of the processes, all of the procedures, all of the scripting, et cetera. It all lives in the vault. So I'm going to make sure, Doc, that we have a, um, a link below this episode to what's called the Remarkable Practice Vault. And it has all the resources that you need, not, not just for the remarkable conversion, or I'm sorry, attraction, which is, again, everything to help driving new people into your business, which, again, goes back to a little bit more what we covered on a previous episode, but actually the conversion process. And one of my favorite things about the vault is the, the true conversion uh, methodology and, and everything that comes with that with the scripting and just the step-by-step -step approach to it. And what's amazing is I think a lot of you who are out there as you be, as you are CEOs from speaking to you is you think maybe really high level, but what I love about our, our approach is that we break everything down into a map, into a journey. So it's, it's kind of, it speaks to us. Like to me, I'm like, that's all I need. I just need the map, but it's, but it, that's just the beginning. And then you open the door and it's like underneath that you have everything else that you need to know. Yeah. For so you, for your team, for your, so CEO, yeah, yeah, for yeah. your associate doctors. Right. So the, that Precisely. whole thing talking to the CEO right now, it's like, listen, yeah. outsource it leverage. This is inc it's inc it's incredible leverage to be able to get access to such a resource. And you know, this resource is exactly the bridge across these gaps that we're describing, right? So that across that money gap, that's our attraction resources, the remarkable money machine, marketing machine. And then there's the true conversion process, which is bridging that gap in the, re, in the replacements, um, in the replacements gap, 
get on the other side of that. We, what we're doing is we're, we're, we're pointing you in the direction of the bridge to get on the other side of the gap and get those outcomes that you want, like patients who get it, patients who want it, and patients who stay forever and refer everybody that they know. All right, guys. So I think you've heard, heard enough about the vault. And I'm just the last thing I want to say about that is the vault was designed by the CEO for the CEO. So just, just remember that this was designed, this whole program was designed by a CEO for the CEO, knowing what does the CEO need. And that's exactly why we have our events as well. So I want to invite all of you to join us in our upcoming conversion immersions, which we're going to be hosting, I believe in the months of June. And is it August, Dr. Franson? I don't know when the, the one in Australia is going to be. Yeah, the, uh, the US date is June 11th and 12th, and that's actually yep. been held live. We're going to be live down in Florida and Orlando. We're psyched for that, June 11th and 12th. The Australian event is to be determined as far as the dates go. We're moving that date around. We're approximating it, mainly, Dr. Pete, because of the resurgence that we're seeing with seeing all this growth. We, we pulled the date forward, right? So that's to be determined to be uh, announced actually as we pen the contracts as we speak. But the U.S. event is June 11th and 12th. It's going to be in Orlando. It's the Remarkable Conversion Immersion. So we'd love to have you all join us there. So again, there'll be a link to that here uh, with this episode in the show notes and wherever you're watching it on whatever the platform is. And if you have any questions, you want to learn more about that or even the vault, hey, just shoot me a message or Dr. France in a message, shoot us a private message. We'd love to chat it down with you if you want to learn more about that or any way uh, that we can support you and serve you. We are here for you. And until our next episode, everyone, be blessed. Thanks for listening to this episode of the Remarkable CEO Podcast. Remember, what the world needs now is chiropractic. And what chiropractic needs now is more successful chiropractors. If you like this podcast, please subscribe, share with a friend, and leave us a review. And if you'd like to connect with us personally, direct message us on Facebook, LinkedIn, or Instagram. Now go and be remarkable.